the Harry Potter franchise revealed multiple secrets of the Wizarding World, but it failed to answer all of our questions. From the mystery of Wizarding Kids' basic education, what an idiot. to the theory on how magical portraits work, and everything we still don't understand about Horcruxes. I knew then this was a different kind of magic. Very dark, very powerful. Here are the mysteries the Harry Potter series left behind. What do wizard kids do before Hogwarts? In the magical world of Potterverse, once you turn 11, you get a letter. It invites you to come to the best school of witchcraft and wizardry to learn all about spells, jinxes, potions, and other things. For kids from muggle families, this means that they have to quit their formal education. After all, they went to a regular school before that. Don't be so stupid, you're going to go to the state school where you belong. But what about the children who grow up in wizard households? It's unlikely that they go to muggle schools before they turn 11 to learn how to read, write, count, and all that stuff. Even if it is an option, it's weird to even imagine, for example, any of the Weasley kids going there. And surely it's risky for the Statute of Secrecy? Because, you know, kids talk. Another option is that they are homeschooled. This one's a bit more likely, at least for the pure-blooded families who are proud of their ancestry, like the Malfoys, for example. At the same time, the quality of this homeschooling is rather doubtful. After all, not just any parent can teach basic skills. Luckily for Harry, the Dursleys didn't have to homeschool him. But here's another question about the boy who lived. Why is Harry so rich? Remember those heaps of galleons we saw in the first film in his Gringotts vault? Didn't think your mom and dad would leave you with nothing though, did you? It allowed him to live in the wizarding world without thinking about where to get money. Quite a nice bonus, right? Because if, along with Voldemort constantly on his tail, Harry had trouble buying new robes, that would make his life unnecessarily harder. So he must have been extremely thankful to his parents for leaving him such a fortune. But the question remains, where did they get all that money from? To help you understand exactly how much Harry was left with, some diehard fans calculated it all in muggle terms, and it turns out to be around $300,000. J.K. Rowling once revealed that it all came from James's father, who was a rich and famous magician, and that's pretty much all we know. One bonus about being a wizard is they don't have to waste money on mail since most of them have owls. Speaking of which, how does owl post work? It's actually pretty cool that these birds are so clever in the wizarding world. You just tell one where to send your letter or parcel, and it takes it right there. So convenient, right? And when it comes to the movies, it all looks super cinematic, especially when we see dozens of owls flying into the Great Hall delivering the morning mail. But if you dig deeper, you'll see some holes. For example, in the first movie, multiple owls try to deliver the Hogwarts letter to Harry. The movie shows them sitting all over number four, Privet Drive, Considering how important it is to keep the wizarding world a secret from muggles, isn't sending so many owls to a single house too suspicious? Then in the second film, Dobby reveals that he intercepted Harry's letters. How exactly did he do that if an owl always has to deliver mail to the exact person it's addressed to? You only hope that Dobby didn't hurt those poor birds. However, there are creatures that won't let anyone harm them. Why didn't Harry see Thestrals before? I can see them too. In the Order of the Phoenix, we learn about the existence of these winged horses. It turns out that only those who've witnessed death can see them. And since Cedric Diggory died right in front of Harry, these creatures become visible to him. But that doesn't add up. Harry actually witnessed a murder when he was much younger. After all, Voldemort killed his mother right in front of him. He even had flashbacks of her cries when Dementors approached him, remember? So how come he never saw Thestrals before? J.K. Rowling clarified this question a few years after the series was over. She said that Harry didn't see Thestral sooner because he couldn't fully understand his mom's death due to his young age. Yeah, that makes sense, but let's not forget that he also saw Professor Quirrell die at the end of his first year in Hogwarts. Doesn't that count? So some fans still think it was a plot hole that Rowling tried to explain but couldn't do so fully. If you're still not confused about the Wizarding World, let's move on to the next question. What's the purpose of the Veil? The death of Sirius Black was the most tragic event in the Order of the Phoenix, if not the entire series. But do we even know what exactly happened in this scene? Let's look at it again. 
After Bellatrix casts a curse, Sirius takes a step into this weird arch, and then he just disappears into it and never comes back. We later discover that this thing is called the Veil, but it's never explained why the Department of Mysteries has it, and we don't know what its purpose is. On top of that, we have no idea what it does to a person who crosses the Veil. It seems to be a barrier between the world of the living and the dead, but does one actually die or shift to another dimension or something? Like a Dementor's Kiss, which doesn't kill a person but leaves it as an empty shell without a soul. It's quite possible that the Veil does something similar, yet it's never clarified. What's more, in the book, Harry and Luna hear voices coming from it. Voices that no one else can hear. But again, we get no further explanation. Does anyone have any theories as to what the Veil is? Share them in the comments below while we move on to the next mystery. What's the deal with magical portraits? They can talk, move, visit other portraits, and they even have feelings. <gasps> Amazing! Just with my voice! <laughs> but how's that possible, even with magic involved? Meanwhile, Harry had a photo of his parents who waved and smiled at him but never talked. Do portraits and photos work differently? Guess we'll never know. But that's not all. Another mystery seems to be a plot hole for some fans. Why didn't Harry consult Dumbledore's portrait after his death? Like all the other Hogwarts headmasters, it appeared in his study right after the tragic event. Weirdly, Harry didn't consider approaching it to ask questions about the Horcruxes or anything else. Wouldn't his painting have all the answers like the real Dumbledore? Well, maybe it wouldn't. It's just a theory, but wizarding portraits can contain memories about the people painted in them. But they can also hold a mark of the person who created them. Each painter has his own feelings about the person he paints. Perhaps that impacts the final result? So in the end, the painting simply becomes a projection, the way the painter saw this person. If that's true, Dumbledore's portrait wouldn't have been able to discuss the Horcruxes because the painter didn't know anything about them. And this leads us to the next question. How do Horcruxes actually work? We're aware that it's the darkest magic there is, but still, we want to know more. As we read in the books, no wizard could split his soul into more than two parts. Except for Voldemort, of course, who managed to create as many as seven, one he didn't even know about. But how exactly did he do it? It can't only be because he was the cruelest or most determined wizard, right? But only I can live forever. And here's an even more important issue. The Half-Blood Prince book says that, to create a horcrux, one needs to say a specific spell. Okay, we accept the fact that that was never shared, but it makes us doubt that Voldemort didn't know that he unintentionally made Harry a horcrux as he tried to kill him. Like, did he say the incantation in the moment and then forget about it? Okay, let's assume that it was an accident. Does it mean that any murderer can inadvertently create a horcrux and just leave a piece of his soul somewhere? So many mysteries. Let's talk about some non-dark stuff now. How was Hermione's final year at Hogwarts? We know for a fact that our favorite know-it-all came back to school after they defeated Voldemort. While Harry and Ron couldn't care less about their studies, she just had to take her newts. Since Hermione returned as a seventh-year student, it means that she was in the same class as Ginny and Luna. Boy, would we have liked to see their interactions. Hermione was probably more anxious about her exams than about defeating Voldemort. Well, at least her final year at Hogwarts was finally peaceful, and no life-threatening danger came her way. So it would be less of a fantasy drama and more of a, I don't know, a teenage sitcom? With Hermione as the lead, it'd be a pleasure to watch for sure. So hey, creators of the upcoming Harry Potter series, we have a brilliant idea for a spin-off here. Anyway, do you have answers to some of these questions? Please let us know in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about your favorite Harry Potter characters, check out our other videos.